Hi all, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you all are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to discuss the Infosys pseudo code questions that were asked in today's morning slot. So make sure to watch the complete video. Before proceeding, let me tell you something that in this video, obviously we are not going to cover all the questions. I have taken few questions to give you a sort of idea regarding the difficulty level and about the topics as well that they are mainly focusing on right so maybe a possibility that the questions that you have uh, like you have received during your test so they are not covered some of them may be perhaps right so this is the first thing to mention before solving the questions and telling you about the things first of all let me talk about the difficulty level so what i found when going through the questions so difficulty uh, i would say easy to medium it was some questions were direct mainly questions were this time for from sorting algorithm like two exact questions i found from sorting algorithm itself so in these questions what was asked the time complexity itself was asked one sorting algorithm was bubble sort right so the algorithm was written there and the question was what will be the time complexity of the given sorting algorithm so you know that what is the uh, time complexity for bubble sort big go of n square right another sorting algorithm that the question that was there in the paper insertion sort right so insertion sort were there and it was asked like what will be the time complexity of this particular algorithm so for insertion as well you must be knowing that big o of n square is the time complexity so these kind of questions were there i found many questions on time complexity although the questions were easy like uh, if if i would discuss so one question was there was a for loop right and there was another for loop so first for loop was going up to less than n and another was also going up to less than n right so it was asked that what would be the time complexity so these two for loops are independent of each other and they are moving till the time n right they are depending on this input that is provided linearly so the time complexity for this particular question will be for this particular code will be what big o of n hence big o of n will be the correct answer for this one so this will be the answer for the given code right so mainly if you are like if you are having clear concepts regarding time and complexity you will be able to solve these questions in just few seconds right so that was the thing um let's solve this question now so the question was uh, you can see we are having two variables a as well as b of integer type a has been initialized as 0 b with 40 now we are having a for loop while a is lesser than that of 20 reduce the value of b so a is what 40 40 is less than 20 is this so okay so sorry a value is 0 now huh? so 0 is less than 20 yes yes it is so what we have to do reduce the value of b so it is going to be 19 and increase the value of a by 1 so it is going to be 1 right so okay so this is 39 sorry 39 and 1 we have it's still 1 is less than 20 so it is going to be 2 then it is going to be what it is going to be 38 so this will keep on reducing so see you you don't have to do this uh in a sequential manner that now 3 then 37 36 4 5 like this you don't have to do this when this condition will be false when a value will be equal equal to that of 20 right so when a value will be equal to that of 20 then this condition is going to be false right and you know that at this particular value b value is also going to be what because you know like b value is uh, we are also reducing b value we are also reducing so b value is also going to be 20 at that particular scenario when a value is going to be 20 so hence 20 20 will be the correct answer for this particular question so some questions are direct which uh, where you have to use a kind of a sense of humor like what is the pattern getting followed instead of uh, sequentially solving the problem like this one. if you will sequentially solve it like one for once you are increasing the value of a uh, on the other hand decreasing the value of b if you will solve this in, in this manner then obviously you are going to take time and time matters a lot during the um, test right here's our next question okay so based on recursion so we are having a variable a of integer integer time initialized with okay so this is a function we are having now to this function two arguments are there integer a integer b the value of a is given as 7 and b as 8 so if a lesser than that of b a value is what 7 7 is lesser than that of 8 of course it is so what we are doing is we are swapping the value of a and b so now <clears throat> the value of b that is 8 that will be in a and the value of a that is 
what was the value of a that was 7 so that will be in b so now this condition is obviously not going to be true again we'll be moving to this function itself now because we are making a call okay to the same function so now we'll be checking b not equal to 0 so b value is what 7 7 is not equal to 0 so we are making a call so take a a value is 8 plus f of a that is 8 itself b minus 1 so b value is going to be 6 now then again you know b value is what see this condition is not going to be true a value is what 8 itself right so this condition is not going to be true this will be true now so for this particular thing what we'll be having is 8 plus 8 plus f of 8 and then 5 then again this part itself is going to be true right so we'll be having from this call f 8 4 then f 8 3 then f 8 2 then f 8 1 then f 8 0 and uh, 1 8 will also be added 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus so this time you can see the value of uh, b is going to be 0 so uh, this this condition is not going to be true this is not going to be true else part will be true which is returning 0 so here we will be having 0 so if you will solve it so here if you will add so 8 plus 8 you will be getting 16 plus 8 24 24 plus 8 32 32 plus 8 40 48 56 plus 0 56 right so 56 will be the correct answer for this particular question right now let's proceed to our next question so here's our next question you can see a value we are having a variable of integer type a as well as b a value is 9 b value is 3 so the question was basically there were four options that what this particular code is actually determining so this is the easy one most of you will be able to find out first of all first option was lcm of a and b second HCF of A and B, third minimum of A and B, uh, fourth was fourth option was maximum of A and B. So here, if you will just go through the code itself, now then also you'll be able to figure it out. So M value to M, we are assigning A greater than B. A value is what nine. So nine greater than three, of course it is. So assign the value A. So M value is nine, right? Now here we are doing if M mod A, so nine mod with nine that is equal to zero and 9 mod with 3 that is also equal equal 0 so print m m value is what 9 so 9 if you will take these two number 3 as well as 9 3 1 ja, 3 3 ja, 9 3 1 ja. so this what is this 9 this 9 is the lcm of these two number so for this code is basically doing that it is giving the lcm of a and b so obviously that will be the correct option so let's see our next question we are having a integer variables x and y x has been initialized with 192 and y with 85 uh, we are having another integer z so to y we are adding 1 so y value will be 86 now from x we are subtracting 10 so x value will be 182 now now to z we are simply assigning x minus y so 182 minus 86 so if you are going to do this what you are supposed to get 96 right you are supposed to get 96 and hence 96 will be the value that will be present inside z and hence 96 will be the correct answer for this particular question let's have a look on our next question so here you can see we are having a variable a initialized with 6 b initialized with 0 i with sorry b initialized with 9 i with 0 j with 0 now if b greater than n, uh, a b value is what 9 a value is 6 so 9 is greater than 6 obviously it is let's move inside this condition so we are having a for loop j equal to a a value is what 6 uh, move inside the loop till the time j value is less than or equal to 9 and j plus plus right uh, uh, okay so now what we are doing is we are updating the value of i is i plus equal to j so i value is 0 0 plus 6 so i value is going to be 6 now and to j value we are incrementing it once so j value will be 7 and inside the loop also we are incrementing it now so j value will be 8 8 less than equal to 9 condition is still true now what we're doing a plus uh, i plus equal to j so i value is 6 8 uh, and j value is 8 so 8 plus 6 will be having 14 now j value will be incremented by 1 that is going to be 9 and here also we are doing the updation so j value will be what 10 so 10 less than equal to 9 no the condition is false so we will come out of the for loop 
and hence what is the value inside i 14 so 14 will be the correct answer for this particular question so these were some of the questions from the morning slot if you want me to make more such questions then do let me know do comment in the comment section and accordingly according to your response i'll be making more such videos i'll be as if you know like these kind of videos requires effort and if it is needed then only i will record these videos so i hope that you have found this video useful if it is so make sure to hit the like button do subscribe our channel as well and do consider joining our telegram community as well the link for the telegram channel is given in the description itself thank you for watching this video those who are having their exam of imposters in upcoming days all the best to you guys and you can understand the difficulty even now that the uh, questions are not that difficult if you are having the proper understanding uh, regarding time complexity loop recursion you will be able to ace the technical part thank you for watching everyone bye bye